Pay to win. The term that has been used in MMORPG genre for decades and a term that completely destroyed and killed many popular and quality MMORPGs. It is the greed from the developers and publishers who implement these pay to win systems in their games with the sole purpose of making short term money at the expense of their community and player base. While in some parts of the world pay to win aspects are not only accepted but encouraged and preferred by players, on the other side the vast majority of the players absolutely despise it. While in recent years players have started accepting some small forms of pay to win, they always remain skeptical and careful until promises of zero pay to win are fulfilled. With that, I wanted to talk about pay to win in Chona Liberty, how bad it actually is, how much it affects the gameplay and how much it will impact the monetization of the global release. But before starting the video, consider subscribing to stay up to date with the future Chona Liberty news and updates. There are few expectations to keep in mind. Chona and Liberty is a free to play game. The notion that a completely free to play game is going to include absolutely no advantages for paying players is wholly unrealistic. Even games like World of Warcraft which require subscription fees and players to buy expansions have pay to win elements such as WoW token. That being said, the real concern surrounding pay to win should be whether or not free to play players have the opportunity to meaningfully progress in game without paying and if the content is gatekept from those players. So far in Tron and Liberty, it is absolutely the case that a free to play player can complete all content in the game. The game ensures meaningful progression with barely noticeable pay to win. Here is a breakdown of everything related to pay to win in Tron and Liberty. Lucent and Solant are the main currencies of Tron and Liberty. Lucent is the main currency for trading, think of it as gold in Lost Ark or silver in BDO. Lucent can also be purchased for real money. Solent, much like Lost Ark Silver, is mainly farmed in-game. It is also available in small quantities from packages and battle passes, just like Lost Ark packages and arc passes. If you ever played Lost Ark though, you will remember that this is simply not worth swiping for. And there usually isn't enough available in the cash shop to make a huge difference. As mentioned, the cash shop will include packages and battle passes will also be available for purchase using real money. And these will also include cosmetics and consumables. The main currency used in the market is Lucent and here you can buy different base gear pieces, recipes and materials. Much like in BDO, these pieces are in their base form and need to be enhanced later. However, unlike BDO, each piece of gear provides randomized traits meaning that the crafting or buying multiple pieces of the same gear can be advantageous but very costly. To put this into perspective, you can transfer the traits from a base piece of gear to an upgraded piece of the same gear for Solent. This is going to be an endgame gearing system. As it currently stands, it seems incorrect to drop comparison of this system to the ones like in Metin 2. Metin 2 features a re-rollable bonus system that greatly affects all parts of the game and has a lot more bonuses to re-roll. And most importantly, Throne and Liberty gameplay so far has not been gatekept based on these stats. Having fully maxed out traits does have great benefits, especially in PvP, as it does give you significant advantage over other players. But this is to some degree nullified due to main PvP content being pretty much a Zerg fest where fully maxed out gear will have minimal effect. In other words, this system hasn't significantly affected the player base so far and I expected not to until min-maxing at the late game when legendary gear and traits are available. As with any MMORPG with the market, bottlenecks are in place to prevent users with vast amounts of currency from progressing without any gameplay. Right now in Korea, Solon could be a significant bottleneck and the major system that is stopping players from easily transitioning into cash op. There are many ways of obtaining large amounts of Solent, where most of them that don't require grinding and playing require the use of marketplace. And since the marketplace requires premium currency, you can see how quickly this becomes a problem. Sure, Lucent can be obtained through simply playing the game, but spending hours upon hours either grinding a gear piece with a best in slot trait extract or open world dungeons does not sound like a fun and ideal time for a normal casual player. Growth stones work in a similar way in terms of bottlenecking this transition. 
They can also be farmed in game but in very small quantities, while the whole grinding part can be skipped again with spending Lucent in the marketplace for the select materials that are used for crafting these growth stones. Everything you need to upgrade your gear is available for premium currency, and that is a problem. In Tron Liberty, every time you die in PvP or PvE, you lose 5% XP and get a debuff stack. Every 20 deaths, you will gain a debuff stack that will reduce your damage and speed by 10%. So if you die 40 times, the debuff will scale to 20%. This XP can be recovered within 10 days by going to a restoration NPC and either using your 3 free daily restorations or trading the XP back for Solent. The price in Solent will scale up with the amount of XP to be recovered. This means that at the higher levels, the cost of recovery will also increase. This is also used to remove the debuff. For example, if you have two stacks and you want to reduce it to one, you will need to have your pending restorations at below 40. Although there are also restoration coins, this example was just to show that players must be careful with their Solent spending, because it will become a bottleneck by extension, making pay to win harder and even worse. With all that being said, there is nothing that you cannot obtain by just playing the game. And regarding the earlier mention of trades, Throne of Liberty does feature a blessing or pity system where accumulating 500 blessings guarantee 100% success chance on leveling up trades. As mentioned before, this is the ultimate endgame system which so far has not significantly impacted the game nor gatekept players. While having a shared market currency may be concerning to some, purely free to play players will be happy to know that they will be able to acquire all loosened items in the cash shop without the need to spend any money at all. This means that cosmetics are not exclusive to paying players. Lastly, as large-scale PvP is right now, a Giga Whale can easily be melted by 2 to 3 full blue geared players. Given the scale of 200 versus 200, it shows how little impact the gear advantage is as it stands. Of course, this is something to keep an eye on for the future. If you remember PvP Guild Islands in Lost Ark, the significance of gear continuously shifted over time, where different metas and strategies sometimes meant a lot more than the gear itself. As it stands from the objective standpoint, the pay to win in Throne of Liberty is present. By definition, it does make you stronger the more real money you put in, but it doesn't completely break the gameplay. Sure, free to play players will be discouraged knowing that there are whales who can skip the grind and go straight to the best in slot gear, so why would anyone want to spend any time grinding? If in the future Throne of Liberty uses a system like Lost Ark which will require continuous new gear and upgrades, the power creep can make this gap bigger over time. This means that even if right now aspects like PvP seems mostly balanced due to similar power levels, a power creep system would make players fall behind and make PvP less balanced. Alternatively, if Throne of Liberty adopts a system where the endgame optimizations provide small differences in power and are seen as more of a flex or endgame goal rather than a requirement, then the game will continue very healthy with the pay to win system as it is right now. As a final note, the westernization of Torna Liberty may come with a significant improvement to the current Korean system as we saw in Lost Ark. If the pay to win becomes even less noticeable than it already is, then it is leaving me very hopeful for the game's release in the west. What are your thoughts on the Torna Liberty pay to win? Let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing and watching some of my other videos appearing on your screen.